Then in the extra, drugs, poverty, crime, his life was surrounded by it. But this Twin Cities man did what few others accomplished. His story of hope is next. By all accounts, his life was heading nowhere fast. But this Twin Cities man decided to do something most people could only dream about. Tommy Watson wanted more than a life filled with drugs and crime, but he knew it would take something close to a miracle to achieve it. Carol Evans' Randy Shaver is here now with Tommy's incredible story. Randy? Amy, there's a poem that reads, Dreams are hard to follow, but don't let anyone tear them away. Hold on, there will be tomorrow. In time, you'll find a way. Well, tonight, an unbelievable story about a former Gopher football player that brings those words to life. Red 29. Red 29. For Tommy Watson, life couldn't get much better. Go, go, go. The 31-year-old has a home. Why was it important to obey God? He has a loving wife and a beautiful family, <laughs> which recently grew by one. Me too. Okay, there you go. I think this is a beautiful moment Good job for me. Baby Avery was born in July. Why do I want to help somebody else be a leader, right? Tommy is an educator in the Twin Cities. He loves working with kids, and he's making a difference. Tommy Augustus Watson. This past summer, he graduated with a master's degree, but wants more. The next world is a doctor. To that end, Tommy is studying to become a principal, and he'll get his license in March. Tommy Watson is living the American dream in Minnesota. You gotta catch it. But that's only after he escaped a much different life in Denver, a place where coming home is bittersweet. I know what it's like to, to be in the foster homes, to live in the crisis centers, to live in the motel rooms, um, to see your parents going out of prison, to uh, um, be deemed as a failure in school and be laughed out by your classmates. Actually, Tommy's story is worse than that. He grew up in a Denver project called Five Points during the 1980s and early 90s. Nicknamed Little Compton, Five Points was a high-crime, drug-saturated, gang-infested neighborhood. We here shooting every night. Just know if you look, if you growing up here, then you should know about shooting. Tommy's life growing up was anything but stable. His parents and five siblings often moved from place to place. And for one year, they actually lived in a motel room. I can recall living back in a motel when I was in eighth grade with um, eight other people, nine of us for my entire three year of school, and sitting back kind of watching my mom and dad in and out of the motel room, addicted to heroin. On the other side of the room, my grandmother and her boyfriend, alcoholics, and then my older sister and her boyfriend were doing crack cocaine on the other side of the motel room. That was 1987, and Tommy Watson never thought he'd walk into that same motel room ever again. But we did. Nine this people, is right? it. Nine people? Nine people, man. In here. Two beds. You're kidding me. Kid you have you to be kidding me. I kid you not. Tommy, this is no more than 10 by 16. I kid you not. For Tommy, this room represents the lowest point in his young life a place where a 12-year-old boy nearly smothered in the hopelessness that surrounded him. What do you think? What do you feel? What do you... Unbelievable. When I come back, in, I mean, my reaction is like, wow. We all stayed in this room. Nine of us in one room, the entire year of school. It just really goes back to what's possible for any kid. I mean, coming out of a situation like this and being able to go on to become a college graduate and pursuing a doctorate. Many kids don't have excuses. A person can come out of this. This is uh, pretty unbelievable. And that's why Tommy's telling his story in the hope of saving others. We spent time walking through Five Points, which has evolved in the last 13 years into a livable neighborhood. But for Tommy, there are places that bring back terrible memories like a drive-by shooting, and he was the target. So you get out of this van and you walk around, you look at the van and you go, what do you say to yourself? Wow. <laughs> you know, the folks around here are saying, wow. The van has been shot up from front to back. I'm saying, wow, I'm getting out of here, I'm going back to Minnesota. <laughs> and I was out of here the next day. <laughs> that was during Tommy's college years at Minnesota. He arrived on scholarship in 1992, a big-time football prospect, a Jim Wacker recruit. But he never became a star. What's going on? Yeah. 
you. You're the man. What's You're the man. You're the man. man. Which is just fine with the most influential man in Tommy's life, his high school football coach, Pete Levine. It was Levine who discovered Tommy at a Denver rec center and encouraged him to leave five points for the suburbs. Tommy showed something inside him that I just took a shot and I happened to guess right because I, you know, he never let me down. Homecoming night at Mullen High School. Tommy joined former teammates for the big game. Mullen is a white suburban Catholic school, and Tommy took three buses one way every day to attend. The school paid half of his tuition. Uh oh Tommy worked for the other. Of all the kids I've sent away, no one, no one came from where Tommy came from and went as far as he has. It's the success that we celebrate, of course. But Betty Benson was Tommy's education advisor when he arrived at Minnesota. She didn't know Tommy's story then, but now sees a man destined for greatness. I think it's kind of like dropping a, a petal or a pebble in the, in the water. You know, it's sort of the ripple effects of he had some support and now he's reaching out to other people and having an influence on other students. How can being a leader help you with being a family man? And that's exactly what Tommy is doing. He's paying it forward. He's giving back all he has received and then some. And the results are real. Because if you're a leader, then you got compassion. If you got compassion, then you will listen to the needs of other people and what they got to say. Straight on. After each class, a hug. The personal touch that symbolizes Tommy's approach. He's written an unpublished book about his life titled, A Face of Courage. And still, no mom and dad. I'm sure mom and dad will be home any minute. You can imagine the therapeutic value in documenting such a painful past. Taking care of business, man, good. And how it led, miraculously, to all of this. Tommy's message is simple. If I can make it, so can you. I'm a person who has the confidence to stand alone, and I'm a very compassionate person, and I try to be very confident in the things I do. And I said, you know, those are things that really help me get through life. Dan, let's go. Tommy has what can be called a strained relationship with his family in Denver. His mother passed away just a few years ago. He's currently a behavior intervention teacher in the Osseo School District. He hopes his story will inspire troubled youth to make good choices and see education as the path to a better life. Amy, he is the most remarkable man I've ever met in my life. Wow. He Randy. is really a true wow. inspiration. Thank you for sharing your story. We you appreciate bet. it. Well, uh, it doesn't take much to make a difference in the life of a child.